What's up guys, I'm Tony Woodark. I'm a wedding photographer out of Southern California. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about the Leica M6. So chances are you've probably seen a review about these cameras. Someone that I follow a lot, Matt Day, shoots with this thing for the last six years, I think. Pretty much everyone who loves Leicas, this is kind of the most popular one. Some other people, Eric Floberg, Bench Heisch, a lot of photographers that I really look up to all shoot with this camera and I totally understand why. So let's jump into just my first impressions. This isn't gonna be a full gear review. This is just kind of my first impressions of this camera. Real quick, I just wanted to interrupt this video and say that I've built out a page on my website that's full of all the different resources I use, the contracts, um, client management systems, the photography gear I use, my desk setup. Basically everything that I use is on this page and it's all affiliate links, so I get a little kickback if you buy anything from it, so thank you if you do. But I put a lot of work into this page, and so I'd love for you to check it out, and if you wanna buy any gear through there, that helps me out, so thank you. If you haven't checked out already, I made a video with Simon, basically him and I swapped cameras. I sent him my X-Pan, and he sent me his Leica MP, and that was the first time I'd ever shot with the Leica and I instantly fell in love. Just the feel of it and just how the camera performs just was amazing and the lenses were incredible. And so I knew I had to get one as soon as I tried his. And the Leica M6 is a little bit cheaper than the Leica MP. It's pretty much the same as the Leica MP, but this is titanium, I wanna say, and his is brass. So yeah, let's jump into why I love this camera. So first up, I just really love this lens. Uh, Bench Heisch did a video on this lens and I fell in love with it. I just love his work and the photos that he's taking with it are just beautiful. And he shoots a lot with it on digital as well and like a digital and it just gives an almost medium format look with this full frame 35 millimeter lens. This is the Leica Sumalux 1.4 a spherical lens and it's just a beast. It's not a cheap lens. This is the most expensive lens that I own and pretty much I bought this camera to use this lens. Like I just love 50 millimeter lenses. To me that's like the perfect focal length for portraits and kind of just running around and taking photos. I really like 35 millimeter for just kind of your everyday all around and I probably will end up getting a 35 Similux at some point. But for now the 50 is great because I like a 50 better for portraits. Things I like about this lens, obviously it's super small. The Leica system in general is really small compared to, I'm shooting mostly at the Contact 645, with this, which is huge compared to this. I also love just the feel of it, just the focus on it. It's got one of these little focus tabs that's really comfortable. It just glides perfectly. Changing the f-stop is just really smooth. And then this is a really cool part. The Lens hood, which I love lens hoods, is built in. So you just kind of pull that out and twist it and it locks in place. And so you have your lens hood just like that. So you always have your lens hood with you, which is super nice. So I bought this on KEH and it was, it was used and their rating system is really lenient. And so I think it was um, average or something. It was in the 80 to 89 um, range, whatever they call that, and I've yet to find a flaw on it. So to me, 80 to 89 is perfect in their rating system, but still this is a few thousand dollar lens. So um, definitely something that I've wanted to have and saved up for, and basically I sold a ton of cameras so that I could get this. Same with the Leica M6. I went with the all black. I just love the look of it and I got the TTL because I do wanna get a flash for this and shoot some um, auto flash on it. Um, other features, the TTL has a bigger um, shutter. What do you call this? Shutter wheel? <laughs> you can choose your shutter. It's, uh, it's bigger on the Leica M6 and so you can actually roll your finger across and change it. Whereas it's smaller on the other like a M6, not the TTL version, the classic version. Another thing is when you look through the viewfinder, um, I got the 0.72 viewfinder. There's three different viewfinders. There's the 0.58, the 0.72, and the 0.85. The 0.72 is the most common one, and it works from everything from 28, I think, to 135. And so I imagine I'm gonna have at some point a 35, a 50, and maybe a 90 at some point. I don't know, I'm trying to just 
really use the heck out of the 50 and just love this lens and I'm trying to like limit the amount of gear I have. So to buy this, I sold a ton of gear. I've just been honestly taking this around and the built-in light meter on this is incredible. And so just to be able to carry a little camera like this and cruise around has been super nice because typically I have my contact 645 and a light meter and those things are heavy and it's big. And so just to be able to have a little roll of film in this guy, I've just been loving shooting with this. So we're still in like coronavirus times. I'm just hanging out with my fam and I've just been shooting a ton of photos with them as we go to the beach and just kind of hang out and just spend time together. And this has just been like a really great photojournalism kind of all around camera. And I'm really excited to eventually, as I get more comfortable with it, start using it at, uh, for portrait work and some of my client work as well. Just because the look of this lens is so sharp and so beautiful and the fall off bokeh is just incredible. And so, yeah, I'm super excited about this camera. One thing, like these cameras are only going up in price. And so I'm glad I was able to purchase it while I can and afford it. But I know that they're gonna get more expensive as time goes on. The cool thing about this camera, and I think it's the only camera that I own besides the one that my dad gave me, the Canon AE-1. This is a camera that I plan on having for the rest of my life and passing this down to my kids. So. This is like an heirloom piece that will last the test of time. You know, this is already 40 years old maybe, and it looks beautifully made, perfect. It's pretty much mint condition, but this is something that I will keep forever and I will shoot with this forever. It's repairable and it will last forever. So yeah, it's expensive, but it's something that I just plan on keeping forever, which is very rare nowadays that you buy something and you know that you'll have it forever. Bottom here is a little plate. You pull that off, drop the film in. Um, pretty simple loading process, which is nice. Through the viewfinder, you have rangefinder lines, which is really nice. I've found that I've sh I'm shooting better with this setup. I'm used to shooting an SLR where you're actually looking through the lens and you're cropping the photo with the full frame of the lens and taking the photo. With this, your rangefinder lines are a little bit smaller and so you see more of the scene and so it helps me to go, you know what, I want those things in this frame or I want it out of this frame and so it helps me to control what I want in and out of the frame. While I have the camera up to my eye, I'm still kind of cropping how I want to with a camera because I can see more of what I'm actually taking a photo of. So I really do like how that works with this camera. The rangefinder patch is really nice too. I shoot mostly with SLRs. And so to have a rangefinder, that little patch, you basically line up two boxes and when every, whatever you want in focus is lined up, that's when it's in focus. And it takes a little bit getting used to. I'm still not super fast at it, but I've gotten really sharp photos out of it. Whereas with an SLR, I don't know, you, sometimes you're kind of guessing. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting a better hit rate with a rangefinder, which is awesome. I also use the focus distance on the lens. So before I'm gonna take the photo, I'm like, oh, my kid's two meters away or six feet away. And you can just kind of adjust it and then put it up to your eye and then kind of doing those last minute adjustments to get it perfectly sharp and then take a photo. That's pretty much it. It's really stripped down camera. The light meter is incredible. It only goes to one one thousandth of a second. I wish it went to 2000 or even 4000, but it's an old camera and it works. Um, you wind it, which is, I really like the, the motion of that. Take the photo and then when your roll is done, you click that little rewind button, push that down, and then you grab this guy over here 
and you pop that out and you wind up your film. Pull the base plate off and that's it. I mean, it's a pretty simple standard 35 millimeter camera and I just love it. I'm obsessed with this. I'm probably gonna end up getting more Leicas in the future just because I just love how simple and beautiful this is and how nice it is in your hand. It's pretty much impossible to explain until you hold one. So I hope at some point you get to hold one and I really hope you get to try one. If you got any questions about this camera, please drop them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Yeah.